What's up? Hunter did, the, Hunter did the run and jump. See if you can see any of them. Can you see any of them? No. Right? You can go on this side. There's elk behind us. Bunches of elk over there in the field. There's probably like 40? 40 plus? How many things over there? Like 50. Bunches of elk. Hunter got some pretty cool shots of them, I believe. So. I did not get charged today, but I'm just telling y'all if I did get charged today, he would have ran and left me because he already told me to get away from them because I was too close. I told her to get away from them, man. When they, they rutting out here and Hunter's in the way of the of the process. male elk. Like, the don't process. be around them suckers. They, uh, they got something on their mind right now. Don't get in the way, but you get some cool shots of it? Yep. So this is elk sightings in Cherokee, North Carolina. Might do a little poker sprinkled in a little while. Been playing 510, running extremely good, so might put some of that in there, but here's the elk. Doop. We are home now, back in Alabama. It is time to kick it in high gear for our first priority, which is fishing the Bassmaster Elite Series. That is the number one priority over YouTube, over poker, over everything right now. So, gotta build me a couple more Point Blank and Fuji rods, get everything ready to go down to Florida and start with the St. John's River next year. Super excited to get it going. Just gotta get everything buttoned up where we got time to get down there and catch us a bass or two. So basically, about to go over a couple poker hands though for the past week. I played 47 hours of poker in five days. So. I'm going to go over a couple of more interesting hands that I had, you know, this past week. And so we're going to start off with a 2-5, no limit hand. Everything is five-handed except for the 5-10 game, which has plexiglass dividers. It is eight-handed. So for the for the 5-10 games, we're most, for the 5-10 hands, we're going to be mostly eight-handed. For the 2-5 hands, we're going to be mostly five-handed. So starting off with 2-5, I am under the gun plus one, which is also the cutoff because we are five-handed. Under the gun limps. I raised to 20 with Queen Jack of Diamonds. Uh, Under the Gun has $800. That's the effective stack in this hand. I raised to 20 with Queen Jack of Diamonds. The button calls and folds around to Under the Gun, which also calls. So we go to the flop with $65 in the flop. The flop comes Jack 6 7, and Under the Gun leads out for 15. So Jack 6 7, Rainbow. Under the Gun leads out for 15. I have Queen Jack of Diamonds. I have a Jack, and I believe I have a backdoor flush draw. Anyways, he was out at 15. I go ahead and raise it up to 40 because, I mean, leading into the pre-flop raiser, especially for such a small percentage of the pot, should be some kind of a funky draw, a weak top pair, maybe even like a pocket eights, pocket nine types hand where he's just trying to, I don't know what he's doing really, just trying to make a stab. It's really a weird way for him to play the, play the hand, having a leading range of that small on that board. But he bets 15. I raise to 40. The button calls and then under the gun calls. So, we go into a turn, which has $185 in the pot. Turn comes a queen of hearts. So now I have top two pair, and under the gun checks, I bet $135. The button folds, and under the gun calls. Now, I will say this. Under the gun has only been at the table for about three or four hands, and on the very first hand where he walked up, I made a big river bluff and got called, and then I showed the hand down, and I had six high, and he made a comment about, you know, what exactly did I have. So I knew that he was paying attention whenever I did bluff a big hand earlier. So really going to use that to my advantage. Make You know, if it's in his head that I might be bluffing, I'm going to use that to my advantage as much as possible. So the river comes another six. So no flush got there. And we still have top two pair on a queen jack seven, six, six board. This is going to be a good river for me most of the time because if he was doing something really strange with a hand like pocket sixes or pocket sevens or seven six now it's going to be way less likely that he has you know a hand like that and it's going to be i feel like it's going to be way more likely that he has a hand like a jack 10 jack 9 jack 8 maybe even maybe even he'll do something weird with ace jack uh king jack and i got lucky so i feel like whenever the six comes on the river obviously there's less sixes possible so it's less likely he's going to have one of those super strong hands that contains a six so he checks to me on the river. I go ahead and bet 400, which is a pretty big size bet for a, you know, this size of pot. I think the pot was around 500-ish. Let me think that back. Yeah, the pot was around 500-ish, and I bet 400 on the river. He thinks for like a minute and a half, which is odd, and then elects to go all in for 600. 
So it's 200 more for me to call, and the pot is already like, let's see, 500 plus 6, 11, 15. I got to call 200 to win almost 1,500. So I'm getting, you know, over 7 to 1 on a call. So I make the call for 200 more, and he has 6, 7 suited. So he flopped bottom two pair. He turned bottom two pair with a flush draw, and then he made a full house on the river. So pretty much nothing we can do about that one. You got top two versus bottom two. He ran out of full house. Just kind of got a little unlucky there. It's just a kind of a hand that could have went either way. And I tried to play it to my advantage on the river and bet extremely big. He just happened to have a better hand than me that time. So that's okay. The next hand is going to be at a 5'10 table. We are eight-handed, and the effective stack in this hand is going to be the cutoff, which is $1,000. So basically, there's a under-the-gun straddle to 20, folds around to me to the cutoff who limps in for 20, and I elect to raise to 85 on the button over the limp and the straddle. So it folds around to the straddle who puts in the call for 85, and then the cutoff also calls 85. So the flop comes queen, eight, seven, all rainbow. Pretty much a really good flop for me. It's going to be pretty difficult for the straddler or the cutoff to really have me beat right here. The cutoff should almost always be raising pocket sevens and pocket eights. And I would even assume seven, eight suited. And, but, you know, obviously some people do, do limp those hands. So it's not 100%. And the, cut, the straddler should also be a very difficult to have us beat right here. There's only a couple combos of seven, eight. And I think he might have three bet pocket eights and pocket sevens a decent percentage of the time. So a dream flop for us really because the straddler and the cutoff is going to have a ton of straight draws but not a ton of really, really strong hands, at least in my opinion. So it's really a good board for me to get a ton of value. So raised 85 preflop, two calls, flops queen eight seven, checks to me, I bet 155. I believe that this sizing is a little bit too small. I definitely could have bet a decent amount bigger. I could have went, you know, in the 215 range, I believe is a little bit better bet sizing. And it also sets up a little bit better um, stack to pot rate ratio with the cutoff just in case that the turn card does get a little bit dicey and I just elect to go ahead and shove the turn. So I think I should have bet a little bit bigger, maybe the 215, 230, maybe even 250 sizing on this flop because they, they're going to have so many draws and, I'm, and I should just be charging that as much as possible. So Straddler calls the, eight, calls the 155, the cutoff calls the 155. Also, turn card comes in offsuit five. So I think now we have a complete rainbow. The straddler checks, cutoff checks, and I bet 365, I believe. And it folds around to, well, the straddler's still in the pot, but he folds. The cutoff goes all in for around $800 total. I call, and the river comes a four, and he has eight, nine off suit. So, really, you know, good spot for us. You know, as soon as you raise on the button with ace, queen, and flop top pair, you're going to have a pretty good hand most of the time, but definitely made some mistakes in that one as far as sizings go. I think that I could have played that hand a little bit better, but you're never going to play a complete session and not make any mistakes. If you don't think you're making any mistakes playing poker, you are not thinking about the game correctly. That is 100%. So I always make a few mistakes whenever I'm playing. Not a few, a lot every single day when I'm playing. So the next hand is going to be a queen nine of hearts hand rhyme on the button against the exact same player that was in the straddler last hand and he's a he's a very good player he's a very strong player he's, in my opinion one of the better players that's you know in the room that i've played with a few times up there at harris cherokee so i'm on the button he is in middle position and there is a under the gun limp he opens to 40 for middle position i call on the button with queen nine of hearts might be a little bit loose of a call but i make the call anyways Folds around to the under the gun limp who calls and we go to the flop four ways to 120. The flop comes jack six deuce with two hearts and under the gun checks. The original razor leads out for 75, I believe. I call, the limper folds. Turn card comes a queen of clubs. So now we have top here and a flush draw. Super locked hand, like we're not going to be folding this almost ever. There's like almost nothing that could happen where we're ever going to fold this hand on the turn or the river. So the original Razor, I think he bets 155. He bet 175 on this turn, I believe. Yeah, 175 on the turn. I obviously call. Don't want to raise because, you know, if he did raise preflop, he should have a ton of strong hands or be bluffing here. So he should have ace jack, king jack, you know, queen jack, pocket kings, pocket aces, or maybe even a set of sixes in this spot, or even ace queen he could definitely have right here. So he, he could have a, still have a ton of strong hands or be bluffing, and I feel like the majority of the time whenever I'm going to win a decent amount of money, it's going to have to be whenever he's bluffing because a lot of his strong hands, except for the jacks on the flop, have me beat. So I just make the call with queen nine on the turn. 
River comes a another jack. So the top pair on the board on the flop pairs, and we're on the river, and he leads out for 425. Pretty easy call right here. You know, it's just, you know, pretty standard, pretty simple. I put in the 425, and he has pocket sevens, so I guess he thought that maybe I was going to fold like pocket eights, pocket nine type of hand, or maybe I did. I really don't know. Maybe he thought I had a six, and I might hero call him. I really don't know what he was thinking, but uh, he did have pocket seven right there, and we scooped that one. So another good hand for us. Not a super big pot, but a, a good hand that was kind of interesting the way that I played it, because had such a good hand on the turn, but I felt like there's no way I could raise and get called by worse on the turn. So it was a pretty interesting to be in that spot on the turn because I thought about it for a minute. But anyways, got to get um, producer footage. I got to get my producer to let me know the next hand that we're going to go over. Which one's next, Miss Hunter? Okay, this is a very interesting hand. I had just been at the table for about two or three hands, and where it's a 5-10 game. Everybody's really, really deep. Well, one person in the hand's not that deep. Everybody else has like 2,000. Crazy hand. I've seen this before but it's very rare for this to happen like this. So basically, it limps around like six ways, okay? The flop comes king, five, three. Yeah, king, five, three, all hearts. Pretty insane flop. The big blind checks. Under the gun, leads out for like 50 bucks. Goes around to the button who raises to like $160. Goes back around to the big blind, calls $160. Now under the gun, who originally bet $50, raises to $500. Goes back to the button, <laughs> who originally raised to $175 or $160 or something like that, goes ahead and ships it all in for $2,000. Goes around to the big blind, who goes ahead and ships it all in <laughs> for about $950. Then it goes to under the gun, who calls all in, Big blind has ace two of hearts, under the gun has queen jack of hearts, and the button has ten four of hearts. So three flop flushes on a king five three all heart board. Insane. Like that's, I've seen three flop flushes before, but that is crazy. You don't see that very often. It's extremely rare. So three flop flushes in one hand. It's pretty funny because right now at Harris Cherokee, you're not allowed to, to verbal is not binding anymore. So if you're sitting at a table and you're wearing a mask, you can literally say I'm all in and it doesn't matter. Or you could say, I call, doesn't matter, I raise. Verbal does not matter at all anymore. So if you would like to go all in and you have a bunch of chip stacks, you have to ask for an all in button. So it's pretty funny, the guy on the button said, let me have the all in button. Whenever, after the queen jack of hearts raised to 500, 10 four hearts said, let me have the all in button and then throws it in the pot. Goes back around <laughs> to the big blind. He says, well, give me the other all in button. He gets it and throws it in the pot. And then the queen jack of hearts said, well, screw it, give me a button. But the dealer was all out of buttons. So pretty funny because they, we ran out of all in buttons on the flop when three people flopped the flush. But interesting hand for sure. And that's it. That was some interesting hands I played. I did play some more cool ones last night outside of Atlanta. I played in a little poker room. Played some pretty interesting hands there, but I played most of them absolutely terrible. I had one of the sessions where I played the worst I've played in a long time. I really felt like I played really badly last night, but I won a pretty good amount of money. Just got super lucky. So that's how it goes sometimes. You play bad, you play good. You never really know how you, you know, all poker is is reacting. Like, yeah, there's a standard GTO way to play your all this stuff, but it's all about reacting to your environment. If you want to, if you want to actually try to like win a lot of money, you have to try, be trying to exploit the other players you're playing against. So it's all about reacting to your environment. And last night I did not react in the proper ways in three or four pretty sizable hands. So that came back to bite me, but we ended with a good result anyway. So if y'all like the poker hands, leave a like, leave me a comment, let me know that y'all liked them. Time to get this boat rigged. Time to go catch some bass. Time to go crush them next year in the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series. So if you want to follow along, hit that subscribe button and turn the alerts on. We'll see you all in the next video. I appreciate you guys watching. We're on a small little local field right now. Small little local elk sighting field right now. Just a small little local elk sighting field beside this small little local river that's stocked with trout. So small little local stuff in the mix today. Those people are like for real elk linked away.